Not that my word carries any more importance than anyone else's, but first, I really want to point out the quality of Gojira when they are the only metal band I still constantly listen to since I was a small teenager. There is a rawness, a weediness, a straight-to-the-pointness and a personality in their sound that kept my attention and appreciation going after I saw myself indulging in rap and experimental music more. And I don't think there is enough Gojira content out there, so let's make an unnecessary long video about their whole discography. An album ranking would be really boring, everybody did that, so let's take one step further. So, I'm ranking every Gojira song from their 7 main studio albums. So, no Masista Inferno, no 90s LP, and no Empalat. The latest record of theirs at the moment of this video is Fortitude, and it is pretty much only weeks old, so my opinions about the songs from that project is subject to change really fast. And finally, I'm not the most incredible music critic that's out there, and Gojira songs usually have a lot of layers and symbolism, both in the lyrics and in the instrumentals. So I have to remind you that this is just my simple, subjective opinion, do not take this very seriously, and if there is something of note about any song here that I forgot to talk about or didn't notice, please feel free to compliment me some in the comments, respectively. <laughs> Okay, so let's go. What is the worst Gojira track? This riff is stinky, the progression and the vocals here are very underwhelming, and generally I'm not a fan of the production or how the guitar sounds in this album. And man, this title pisses me off. I always wondered what was the deal with the Niverse thing, then when I read it out loud, I was like, damn, this is dumb. And I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan. This song also bothers me because this is probably the most by the numbers Gojira song. I love the way how the band sees love and passion, so why is it this low? Well, because this concept is good and would be later worked upon in a better way, while this song it's just a lot of noise, there's a lot of different riffs and parts that I don't feel come together in an interesting way. The bad finale this album deserves! Uh, I don't like Lepant so much, and this is one of the reasons why. This is just the way of Pop Flesh, the song too, but less everything. The march-like progression and the chorus is good, but the rest is so damn boring. I have to skip like a minute and a half of the song to get what I want. Also, nothing really interesting lyrically here. This song has one thing going forward, and it is that chorus if that, in fact, is amazing and stays for more time compared to the one in Prey, but the rest is also equally boring and weak. The gallop here is somewhat good, but I don't really like the mid-tempo singing and riffs that this song and the whole album goes for. The lyrics punch you, it is savvy, but aside from the clunky riff that did grow on me, I think the rest of the song doesn't work that much. So 
this song flows really well in the album and has some interesting mini parts, but I think it's a really weak song where, once again, nothing really sticks that well. It is not hateable though. I like the title and this part of the song is cool, but the rest never sticks to me sadly because I really wanted to like this song. Well, it does create a vibe, first time they use the tribal drums as well, but it isn't much of an instrumental track as it is an interlude. This is the Shion from Gojira songs, I only remember it when I see it. Did I just make True Kingdom Hearts reference on a Gojira video? The song is evil, but nothing really stands out for me. Same as 5988, though I do like it more than that one, I think the melody here is creepier and moodier, but also it is not exactly a song. I remember Mario standing out in this song and definitely is a song to be experienced live, but I just find it to be a bit bland and forgettable, not really my cup of tea. Similar to the previous one, I do like the chant itself here, though I think it overstays its welcome. Ah yeah, and it's also the only Gojira song here with a guitar solo. Cool, but whatever. Also, the music video is pretty awesome though. This riff is pretty cool, and that part where the guitar and drum progresses together is very appealing, but the song always failed to cap my attention. Did you know that BOTA in Brazilian Portuguese means boot? I think that's funny. That's all I have to say about it. I love how dark and sinister the lyric of the song is. It's generally kind of creepy. I really don't care about the rest at all, but I don't hate it. Why I dislike this album so much, it's because it really gives me that 2010 new metal vibes. Like, there's a type of production in songs in the genre nowadays that always made me feel very false or just not raw enough. And I think their 2012 project is the one that passes that impression the most. weird song, more like an alternative metal, I would even say it's kinda grunge, but anyways, I don't visit this that often. The Low Your Axes and Learn From The Trees is really really good, and I do like the ending of this track. But I also think this is another case where I have to skip a lot of seconds to get to the part I want. Uh, some days I like this song more than others, but at the moment I'm fine with it being here. I really like the lyrics, it is very uplifting and it is a really cool use of yogic language, yogic philosophy, something like that which I think it's awesome. The instrumental part is a little thin for me, but I think it's a fine enough song. Chelsea, 
not a fan of every part of the song, and the lyrics are a little masculine in meaning. Like, yeah, yourself, sure, thanks. But I do like the momentum the song has, and some vocals and instrumental deliveries here are awesome. I'm trying to run. I'm trying to for some reason, I wrote the notes of the song as cell phone bad, but the lyrics are about depression and feeling locked inside your own mind. Why was Younger Me so dumb? Younger Me was two weeks before. It's okay. Oh, the groove. I like the lyrics are pretty straightforward, but I still think it's enjoyable. I'm not a big fan of the riff though, surprisingly enough. Iconic, you know. I do like the main riff, it's always fun to listen, but I wish there was more to the structure and that the lyrics were more interesting. It's a song that always bothered me after a few minutes. Sounds very cinematic in a way that I don't know if I like it, but I do think it sounds better as a newer, popier metal song compared to the other songs on the album. The trashier and arena like riffs here are pretty cool too. Surrender to the grind, embrace the loss that make you cringe, is true distracting of a line to a gamer like me to talk about anything else. Uh, metal. I like it a lot, it's very slow, but I think it fits with the vibe of what the lyric is about. I like the singing here, especially the back and forth part. I think the riff is solid. Don't care really about the rest, but there is much of the rest, so that's good. A very moody way to open Magma, which I really respect, really prepares you for the journey that you are going to experience. Not a song I like to revisit, but I think it's okay. As much as I appreciate the concept of a very uplifting metal album, I do feel like it gets older too fast in the record, and it is debatable if they even did that successfully because their inspirational words aren't enough for me to feel better, because I'm Brazilian. It's still a good song though. Ranked instrumental passage from Godiva, it's still very high up. I love the simple little instrumental songs they do, and they always just click with me in a really specific way. I think the silver chord, even though it's still pretty good, is the one I feel like there's less things going around, and especially it's the one that feels less immersive. It's okay, not my favorite song from the record, but definitely pumping and remarkable. Does not really stand out in any way, and I would like the riffs to remind me more of Egypt, but it still is a badass and fun song. I love the lyrics and the riff that almost sounds like a saw. Joe's delivery in the song is also really good. There are some parts I don't really care for, but I just have a ton of fun listening to the song. This 
And I just really like the riffs on this song. Don't talk about the last of us. Don't talk about the last of us. Don't talk about the last of us. This one is very much about the death of the Duplantier's mother. So I think it being this contemplative, kind of depressing song fits well. And concludes in a very groovy riff as a way for them to show that they want that energy to turn into something good. And I really like that. This is the best type of overwhelming. One of their most in-your-face songs, and I'm all about it. Though I do think there is too much time to breathe. I don't want that. I want it to be more relentless. Oh my god, this is just unicorn. But this is also good. A little disappointed with this song due to the fact that it is only the introduction of the shant, but I do like this version more. I think it feels more passionate than that one, ironically enough. Seeing how iffy their first album is, this is a surprisingly good closer. Like, it's very straight to the point with what it wants to do, and I appreciate that. The outro is iconic also. Well, I did expect to like this more, but it's still an incredible and moody instrumental. All that you see that is gold is truly gold. I like the singing and the songwriting. It's a pretty immersive song. people being mad about this so it is an incredible track i love how the song changes i love how simple and sparse it is the bass here i remember it very well and the concept of the whale that the album goes for is really really cool but it doesn't click with me that much that many times you know Good chorus, good lyrics, good riffs, good delivery. This is a pretty good song. This has to be listened to together with From Mars, separating than just few would. Kick ass song though, and I think it's a pretty good finale to the journey of the character of From Mars to Sidious. Extremely powerful song. It really feels like you are close to the presence of a giant monster. I really like the outro as well. I I think The Link is a very underrated project from them, and I think Embrace the World is a song that perfectly encapsulates the album. Very out of this world lyrics, very simple but still firm progression, catchy groovy riffs, and it is raw. <laughs> yes, yes. A self-discovering song with really strong old school Gojira vibes. Yes. <laughs> I'll be there for you. 
perfect album opener and it isn't even their best album opener, hell yeah! Well, that's a nice Black Sabbath song. Song is awesome. Very like the other songs in the link, but it has a specific mood or parts that distinct themselves from the album. I like it a lot. I'm sitting by a lake, but it's not a this one is really weird. It feels strangely more accessible compared to the other tracks from the project. That's not a complaint, by the way. It's really refreshing song to listen to. I think the album would be a little one note without it. This is a really pretty song. Apparently, this song is about Joe's daughter, and that's cute. I love how the chillness of the first leg contrasts with the epicness of the chorus. Not a heavy track, but I do not mind. This song is pretty much just stranded too in the context of the album, but I still love the song. I love the production in the song, it sounds so meaty, it really has a punch, maybe a little bit preachy, but I think it's a perfect, accessible, prog metal single. Hello Uwu, this is Ubu. This is probably one of the most trippier songs they ever made. And I think fits with them pretty well. I want to see more of this. I love how this song is just two, two three big riffs with just some nature sound effects in the middle. A really good finale to a really underrated project. There are so many does in the front of art. Funny how one of my favorite instrumentals is in one of my least favorite albums, but I just love how this progresses and has more layers than the usual instrumental. The ending sounds a bit off and breaks the momentum a little. But I just like the vibe of the song. Also, I don't know if this was intentional, but the way how Joe sings another word to be sounds like another word to burn. And I think that's really stylish. What a good track. Progresses so so well that each second is better than the last. Probably their groove is tracked for me as well. Thought provoking, great lyrics, a really good accessible metal song as well, but we all know that it is this high up because of that drum kick at the start. This song is a very generic, chill to heavy Gojira song, but why do I love it so much? It works, and I barely can tell you why. It just works. This record does something a lot, which is ending with a chill atmospheric outro to an ear blasting opening of the next song. Besides that, this song is so clunky but so fun and heavy. This song is really, really heavy, like 
bam, this specific reef that I showed you guys as well, I have a sexual attraction to it. I love the lyrics, the riffs, the progression, it hits hard. Uh, Man, they can still put bangers in their worst records. Man, like, where do I begin? So, I'm Brazilian. Hello. And... You know, I don't live in a city where the Amazon rainforest is, but of course, this speaks to me in a very personal level. And I think it is a statement to how distinct Gojira sounds and how you can feel the passion in their songs about the environmental problems in our world, seeing how heavy and sad and passionate this song is. And how the campaign they did to help the florist and the people and animals have lived within it, I like how they are not just pointing the problems, but they are fighting to find a solution to them. And that's awesome. This is a very gimmicky song, yes, but the atmosphere, the mood here is so strong, so tense, so creepy. I truly love this. It feels a little slow, but man, when the main riff and lyrics come in, I'm just transcending. Another one that also starts a little slow, but when the song begins, it is immaculate. What more can I say about it? Like, it's the way of a flash version of Flying Wheels, and I think it's even better than that. I think how this song and this album sees death kind of changed my perspective about it completely. I have lost my reason and I made myself. I love the lyrics and the singing in this track so, 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 so much. This song is so good. The clunkiness of this song adds so much to it. It's insane. It feels like it's almost stumbling around, which I guess makes sense seeing the whole unnatural thing this album goes for in the first half. Um, also, Joe's delivery here is pretty much perfect. I want to be in a mosh pit with this song so badly. The way how Joe sings in this song is so weird, but so cool. It feels like a very tribal song, even though the tribal drums are not even present. It just have a very powerful groove and presence. From the Sky was a life-changing experience, because at the time I never heard something so abrasive, aggressive, and even with the guttural slash death row singing that felt so good, so passionate, 
I love Joe because the way how he sings brings a lot of emotions to the song that I don't think I see that much in other metal bands that isn't the obvious ballad song. Not also to forget that this song is big. Like, it feels like you're flying alongside being so magnificent that they are out of your understanding. I love this song. I really do. Yeah, did you know this was a thing? So, there was apparently a time in music where artists would like to put secret songs in the record. And Godzilla did this one instrumental in the way of a clash. And I don't know if it was due to being a secret song that I didn't know about it before. And it just magically appeared at the end of the album when I was listening to it. But this has to be my favorite instrumental song from them. Because it is just so transcendental. It is pretty much a perfect pop prog metal song. The progression here is really fun, the riffs are very iconic and groovy. Joe gave one of the best deliveries of his career here. And another shout out to the production of the Magma album that is really, really good. The most singable of all Gojira tracks, uh, Sight to Behold is one of my favorite songs ever. I love how the band incorporates more electronic instruments and effects, like the bass synth that permeates most of the song. The lyrics and delivery here is very in your face, but I think it adds to it a lot. Singing the way I see things is so simple, it's so fun, and in a way, I kind of wanted more songs like this after The Way of All Flesh. I think it would be a logical sequence to these very raw songs about nature that they would implement sounds that pass that idea of something man-made, something electronic, not natural, to pass some other points. Which, sadly, they didn't made it as much, but I'm still unhappy with what I have today. What a perfect finale to a perfect album. I think this song sort of encapsulates what makes Gojira Gojira. It's straight to the point, it's simple, but it's pretty, it's raw, it's emotive, and shows you hope after seeing so much despair. You can see here how the singer holds his emotion, his feelings towards a better world with all that he has, because it is all that he has. You can feel the doubt in his words, but you know that he is going to do everything he can to make those words come true. The song also motivates me to think about that way, of if I give up, then nothing really will be different. That the small steps you give to improve your life and those of others, it's already something of note. And we already create a path to even more good things for all of us. You knew that this was coming sometime here, and yeah, it absolutely deserves the title. The opening of this song is one of the coolest and most relentless things I ever heard. It feels so grand, so powerful, so omnipotent even. Everything here is just top notch. The skills of the players, the riffs, the structure, the vibes, the lyric. This is Gojira at their absolute top. So, now we have arrived at our destination. I really enjoyed making this video because even though I did listen to all of their albums at least once, sometimes I never paid that much attention to it and making this video definitely helped me to understand the better things I didn't before. And I mostly only like them more now. But, sincerely, since day one of this project, 
I know which song was going to be number one. I can barely put into words why I adore the song. Is it the spacey, sludgy, intricate, and vibey progression that also contains the best riff of all time? Is it the passionate song and unignorable vocals and lyrics of Joe Dupontier? Is it the raw but still transcendent production and skills of every member in the band? Is it the sheer uniqueness in sound and atmosphere and grandiose that I found it to be lacking in other bands of the same genre? Or is it my mind telling me that the next 50 minutes or so are going to be great? I really don't know. I just think this song is incredible. And many of the praises that I give the band and this album previously, it's here in some way or another. This is one of the best songs of all time. Period. I'm pretty sure I pissed a lot of people with this list. And seriously, I'm glad I did. Not that I am rejoiced to have criticized your opinion, but I think that proves the quality of these musicians and the discography they put out to have such a big fan base with a lot of different preferences. I feel like every Gojira song is someone's favorite Gojira song. And that's awesome.